Hey everybody, Chris Zachary here. Today I'm gonna to show you how I built an online quiz that generates automated animated videos over Christmas break last year. So for this project, I knew that I wanted to practice automating and customizing an animated video based on a user input. So I thought about the uh, dumb online quizzes that tell you which Harry Potter character you are and wondered if I could build a quiz like that that gave you an animated result that you could share or whatever. I haven't really built something like this from start to finish before, so I wasn't really sure where to start. I had an idea for what kind of video response I wanted, um, so I started by attempting to design the results image, hoping that I would have time to turn it into animation. I don't usually design illustrations or videos in Figma, um, but I thought this would be a good chance to give that a shot since I would be designing the UI later with Figma. To be honest, I got a little discouraged when designing the results, like this image, I didn't like how it turned out. So I kind of scrapped it and moved over to something else that would be a little less subjective. I often get overwhelmed when designing or illustrating because of the just unlimited amount of options that you can do and kind of how subjective things looking good is. But instead of letting that get in the way, I usually try just hopping over to another part of the project that I feel like I have a better idea for and then I come back to the thing that I'm struggling with later. So the next step was to actually build the website. I'm still trying to find the exact tools I like to use for web development and right now I like sketching on paper and then designing in Figma and then React.js is my preferred framework. I also love Tailwind CSS for easy styling without having to deal with style sheets. It just makes a lot more sense honestly for how my brain works. If you're trying to get into this sort of thing, it's really tempting to go down rabbit holes of chasing better frameworks and all the technology that developer types will say that you have to use. It's just like any other tool. It's not the camera that makes a photo good, it's the photographer. It's easy to look at tutorials and see plugins and think that downloading that plugin is gonna make your art better. If you're not creating with your current tools, you're probably not gonna be creating with any other tools. It's not the tools holding you back. It's probably you. So on to incorporating video. I've really wanted to try out um, using Body Movin' and Airbnb's Lottie library for more than just plain animation on the web. So the whole point of this project was to experiment with dynamically changing videos based on user input. So the person fills out the quiz and the animation changes depending on what they put. So with that in mind, I started on the most crucial part of this project. I spent some time researching HTML5 Canvas to see if what I wanted to do was even possible, and then I moved into an, an initial design for my video. Again, I wasn't really happy with the design I was creating, but I wanted to get something animated that I could test the dynamic insertion on, so I just plowed forward. Once I got the animation on the web, I had a lot of trouble getting canvas animation to resize dynamically, which probably shouldn't be an issue, but to be honest, I was winging it on a lot of this web development stuff, and I spent a lot of time Googling dumb things. So I scrapped that attempt at responsive and made sure I could get the dynamic insertion working first. Honestly, it's a, it's a pretty common part of the creative process, and I try not to let that stop me. It's something I'm trying to learn is to just go the path of least resistance, and if there's something that's blocking me, just put it aside and work on something that isn't blocking me, and then I might get a new idea or just more motivation for when I come back to the previous thing. Surprisingly, I was able to figure out pretty easily how to change the JSON file that Body Movement spits out before it renders to the web page. I was pretty excited because I knew uh, that my idea might work now. Uh, after a decent amount of hours spent on it, it was like now I knew the concept was legit. So from here on out, it was about making the content better and making the experience more enjoyable. I had a brief distraction into figuring out how to download a recording of my animation, which would have been nice to do, but I decided I'd push that off for later if I had time. 
So the other missing element in this project was an engaging animation. I was working on a super tight deadline here, so I needed the animation to be extremely simple. Um, I spent some time away from the computer sketching concept and bouncing ideas off my lovely wife. That really helped me get away from the computer since my design attempt so far had been kind of lackluster. When I finally had an idea that I was happy with, I hopped into After Effects to start animation. A lot of times I design an illustrator for more control, but honestly, when I'm working on a personal project with fast turnarounds and I don't have to send it to a client or anything, it's just a lot faster for me to design an After Effects and then hop right into animation. It was really tempting to spend more time trying to animate the video better. It's a struggle for me to try to build things to impress the other people in the motion industry. The little details in animation that might make some of my motion friends uh, respect the project more. But with this project, I really wasn't making it to impress other animators. I've been wanting to move towards using technology to make my animation more useful. So this was an experiment more for testing and building my skills in the tech side. I definitely wasn't chasing a staff pick with this one, which was a little difficult to grasp or to accept. And But once you kind of accept who your target audience is, and that you're not trying to just get a bunch of retweets on Twitter or likes on Dribble or wh whatever it is. It really helps you to be able to build things without getting distracted. After I had an acceptable animation, I exported with Body Move In and updated my code to use the new video. Uh, surprisingly, everything worked. Uh, I tested it on Molly and it was a success. Since this quiz was supposed to give people uh, bad results, no matter what the answer, I used JavaScript to randomly pick a number between 1 and 15, and use that to update the end card of the video. It was pretty fun showing this to friends and family, and watching them try to answer differently each time as the answer did slightly change, depending on what you put. I also really cheated and deceived by creating a fake success image with my name to promote this project, pretending like you could somehow win and get a success video. Eh, was that false advertising? Probably. Do I feel bad about it? Eh, little bit. So now that the important parts of the project were done, I started to refactor the UI a little bit to make the design better and to make the app easier to use. Uh, the biggest thing was moving each question onto its own page, which made each question more engaging and helped the user or the person taking it focus more on the question instead of browsing ahead. I also experimented with adding a social media share button, but ended up sticking with a simple share on Twitter button in the interest of time. When it came to deployment, I don't really know anything, so I'd heard lots of good things about Netlify, and since deployment and server ops in general are pretty much a mystery to me, I thought it would be a good uh, time to try out just a low friction way to get my app online. After I spent some time picking a domain name, which <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to do a subdomain, so I bought the domain name itstheonlychris.cool, and then as soon as I got it deployed, I quickly figured out how to use the subdomain that I wanted to use, so I'll just save that domain for later use. So I got my site online. Honestly, this part may seem simple to anyone who knows what they're doing at all, but it was really exciting milestone for me to get a project uh, from idea to deployment. This is something that I have very infrequently done, taking something from you know, sketches on a piece of paper to a live website that you can visit. I was pretty excited. Now that the site was live, I started adding in the little things I could do to top off the experience. I wanted to create a help modal that would give information about the developer, me, uh, and explain the project. I promptly canceled that idea because I'm lazy and not that great at development and I went back to googling super basic things. I built a nice loading screen that cycled a bunch of random phrases to delay the result and make it seem like the algorithm was calculating. It worked. So last but not least, I wanted some sort of system to get a notification whenever someone filled out the form. Honestly, this is the part of the process that I feel the most stupid because there's so many better ways to do this. 
but because I was limited by Netlify hosting and not wanting to rig up a database or anything, and also my incompetence, I thought, well, I'll just get an email whenever someone submits. So I used an AWS Lambda function and SendGrid API to set that up, which I was pretty excited when that worked, but unfortunately I went right through the daily limits uh, of the free tier and after one day Gmail ended up locking me out for suspicious activity on my account. So after I launched and all this went down, I ended up scrapping that uh, email notification system and rigged up a similar Lambda function to send me a Slack notification whenever someone submitted. In hindsight, this or probably anything else would have been a better idea than email, but honestly, I'm pretty glad that I did what I did because not only did I get this project completed and shipped on time, but it was a great experience for shipping an MVP that you learn something and then iterate with a better version so I didn't let my dumbness get in the way, and it actually led me to learning both SendGrid's API, which I wanted to try, and to get more experience building a Slack bot, which has a ton of potential uses. So about the project as a whole, from a numbers standpoint, it was pretty good. It wasn't a huge success or a huge flop. I think I had about a thousand people that um, entered and created a thousand unique videos. So that was a success. I had a pretty good launch on Product Hunt, which was nice, I had never done that before. It was kind of fun. But truthfully, the, the best part about this project was just the satisfaction that I got from building a project from start to finish, taking an idea I had on a piece of paper and being able to execute it and release it as a shipped product that other people could use and do that at a limited scope without getting carried away or letting my perfectionism or other excuses get in the way of actually learning. If you take nothing else away from this, just don't let your perfectionism get in the way of finishing something. If you set a clear deadline and uh, really limit yourself on what you're creating, you can actually finish things. And that's a, it's a really nice feeling. If you've made it this far, uh, thanks for watching. Check out my website, itstheonlychris.com, and follow me on Twitter at itstheonlychris. That's where I'm most active online. And I'll be posting the code for this project on GitHub and the project files for free on Gumroad so you can download and do what you want with them. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.